The one thing I'll confirm is that I would never say anything as hacky as, you must focus on the base, sir. <laughs> um, I'm paraphrasing. I also did you know not, that. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Did Come not on. tell the Washington Post that he needs to, quote, man up. Um, it's like they have, you know, a hackometer where they take your quotes and put it through the total hack machine, and it comes out in something that if I ever did say, I wouldn't even have to deputize my friends. They would just shoot well, me. Well, uh, did you in, in any way, shape, or form, using any language, suggest to the president that he focus more on his base? Because <laughs> I think he is focusing on his base. I mean, you saw that rally in Ohio the other night. Oh, I love the rallies. I'm totally for the rallies. And part, that's part of what made Trump such a magnificent and really quite unusual candidate. The fact that he was running on issues that no other Republican, much less a Democrat, would touch. I mean, he had these 30,000 person focus groups that he spoke to <laughs> every single day. He didn't hire pollsters. He didn't hire consultants. That's how he hears from I mean, in a week, he'd hear directly from a million regular Americans. No other politician can do that. I think that this idea of taxing rich people, that would be high-income earners, more than they're currently taxed, <laughs> I think that's an appeal to his base. Granted, this is what the president was um, telling the Wall Street Journal, what Steve Bannon is talking about. This is for the base. The base doesn't care about taxing billionaires. They'd love to tax them some more. They want a middle-class tax cut, and if it's paid for by the rich, so be it. I think he's going right to his base with that one. Yes, and also I'd say it's not um, the typical um, Democrat envy of the rich here. This is something Trump ran on and no other candidate, Republican or Democrat, would ever run on it for president. And I'm sorry this is your audience, but it is unfair, um, this loophole that allows people who are engaging yeah. in um, you know, trading stocks for a living, hedge fund managers to pay 15% on their income. I mean, this is something Warren Buffett always boasts about opposing, how he pays less, a lower rate, rather, than his secretary does. Um, that is unfair, just on a matter of fairness. It isn't the usual, oh, we'll let the billionaires pay. No, um, hedge fund managers should be paying the same rate that you and I are. I agree with that. Sorry to your audience. No, no, no. I think, <laughs> I think a lot of our audience is very... You talked about carried interest, and a lot of our audience right. absolutely agrees with that. Tax them at the same like everybody else does. Now, I'm just getting this coming in. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs says... There will be no modifications to the military's transgender policy, regardless of yesterday's tweet from the president. The Joint Chiefs Chair says the military will continue to, quote, treat all of his personnel with respect. You know, and I think this is another example of a distraction. Take you back to yesterday. The, floor, the, the Senate floor, they're debating health care, and up comes a tweet from the president that says no transgender in the military. So immediately, attention focuses to that and not the job creation in Wisconsin. Would you at least admit that the president sometimes gets ahead of himself, distracts from his agenda? Um, actually, I thought it was a gr I agree that it was a distraction. I thought it was a good distraction for something I wasn't very happy with the president over, and that was his, um, well, I won't characterize them, but his tweets about the attorney general, the greatest member of the Trump administration. Um, that was really getting um, his supporters and people who support his agenda down, um, besides being delusional and, and insane, blaming the attorney general for things that Trump and President Trump himself was responsible for. I, I, at first, I thought it was a distraction from that. According to the Politico article today, if true, it's absolutely fantastic. According to the Politico article today, GOP leaders are opposing um, um, both not having taxpayers fund transgender operations for members of the military, and they are opposing any money for the wall. Um, so in order to get the funding through for the wall, um, it was being held up by conservative, or I would have thought, you know, sane humans in the Senate who don't want taxpayers um, like you and me paying for these lengthy transgender operations, years of therapy. Um, I mean, for Pete's sake, you can't get into the military. You used to not be able to get into the military. Who knows now? If you had asthma, psoriasis, attention deficit disorder, but we're going to bring in people with an extremely peculiar and rare mental illness. Great, and have the taxpayers pay for it. But 
both um, Trump's defense secretary and, as you say now, um, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, mm -hmm. But they're insisting that taxpayers fund transgender operations for, for people with a mental problem? Oh, come on. Okay. We're not going to have any ground wars. Knock this nonsense off. Trump gets to be go out against absurd political correctness and get funding for it. In a surprise announcement this morning, President Trump reversed the previous administration's order to admit transgendered individuals into the military. The president made the announcement on Twitter in the AM. He tweeted this, after consultation with my generals and military experts, be advised the U.S. government will not accept nor allow transgender individuals to serve in the U.S. military. Our military must be focused on decisive and overwhelming victory and cannot be burdened with tremendous costs and medical disruption that transgender in the military would entail. Thank you. Democrats were not grateful for that. They quickly became very angry. Here's part of what they said. This disgusting ban will weaken our military and land that it defends. Our nation is not safer when we sanction discrimination. Because of President Trump's announcement, America will be less safe. The President of the United States this morning announced he is blowing 15,000 holes in our military readiness. It's undermining, I think, our national defense. This disgusting action endangers the lives of American service members and makes our country less safe. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney represents New York in the House of Representatives, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. But, so I understand why people don't like this, but to not like it and to claim that it makes our country less safe are, are two different things. How does this make our country less safe? Well, how about SEAL Team 6? Okay. Um, I think you'd agree they make our country more safe. So Kristen Beck, member of SEAL Team 6, uh, she's a transgender woman, uh, seven combat tours, uh, earned the Bronze Star with Valor and right. a Purple Heart. Um, she's done a hell of a lot more for our country than you and I ever will. And uh, she made our country safer. That's the person we're going to remove from military service. I, I don't think she served as a transgender SEAL, though. Uh, no, but there are thousands of transgender uh, service members serving honorably and meeting the tests, uh, that the high tests that the military expects of uh, its service members. We should absolutely use the standard the president started with, which is keeping our country safe. And part of keeping but, our country safe is keeping good people in the military. These are good people. Right. Well, transgenders have never been allowed to serve openly and to have their transitions paid for by the U.S. government. This is something that began... In a, in a gradual way with the Obama administration, this country's been around for almost 250 years, winning a bunch of wars. That's not a slight on any specific person. It's, I'm merely skeptical at why this makes our country less safe. I don't actually think that you can show that. I think you're just mad about it and you're using our national security to make your point. Well, look, there are thousands of people serving honorably. Um, we won a bunch of wars before we integrated the armed services with African Americans, and we won a bunch of wars without women serving. But we have an enormous number of talented, diverse people serving. We wouldn't, we wouldn't believe we were more safe because we excluded whole groups of Americans. And look, the point is, is that right now, thousands of uh, transgender uh, service members are serving with distinction. And there's not a reason on earth that you would kick them out of the military except for prejudice, and that's well, wrong. Well, that's just, you know, that's just, that's just a silly thing to say. I mean, this is a legitimate debate, and for you to say anyone who doesn't, doesn't agree with you is a bigot. I mean, there's a massive well, call. Wait, hold on, slow down. Well, I didn't say that, yes, but you I, did. I said, you said that the you reason said, would yes, be Yes, you did. You said prejudice. the only reason what is I prejudice. Right. In other words, if you disagree with me, being a holy man, that you're a bad person. Okay. My only point is there are two sides to this. There's a cost to this. There are difficulties integrating people. There are questions about what it means to be transgender. These are real adult questions, and you're blowing them off by describing anyone who doesn't agree with you as motivated by prejudice, and that's what childish. Was, what is the reason for taking members of the military who are serving now, thousands of them, right. with distinction, without a problem, and kicking them out over on this basis? What would that reason be? Well, I mean, the reason is articulated by the people who oppose this is that it's expensive to pay for the physical transition, the medical transition, um, from one sex to the other. And, and, that, that, and that paying that at a time when the military is scrambling for funds is a 
distraction from the core mission, which is winning wars. Right. Well, we so just, like the we onus just, is on you, since the U.S. military has never had this policy in its history, to show that paying for sex change operations is going to somehow make us more likely to beat, I don't know, Al-Qaeda. No, excuse me. We have that policy now, and we've had a, it, more than a year to see how it works. And there hasn't been any diminishment of readiness or any disruption of any kind. And what we know is men like Shane Ortega, uh, another transgender service member, who, who, who conducted hundreds of missions in Afghanistan and Iraq, multiple combat tours. As a transgender a health, person? A, 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 no, that's not true. Yes, as a matter of fact. And, and, and there are right now people like Riley Dosh, a cadet, who just graduated from the okay, military I'm academy sorry, West what you're Point. engaging in is demagoguery. I'm asking you uh, bigger, broader questions, which is, is it an actual concern that the Pentagon would have to pay for sex change operations? Do you think that's a valid military expense? Well, would you Do you say... think these are real questions about how to integrate people in close quarters living who haven't fully transitioned? To blow those off as like bigotry is just wrong. Well, I think if, if, to be fair, we've spent years studying this. Rank Commission did a big report on this. We haven't spent and years it was after studying the, this. Well, actually, the Obama administration did exactly that. This and is Rand, brand new. The Rand, Corporation, the Rand Corporation study looked at this in detail before they changed the policy. We now have a year of experience. And by the way, under your argument, you could also say, you know, women may get pregnant and they may incur additional medical costs. So we shouldn't allow women to serve in no, the military. No, but I would say, I think hold what on, we would so, say so, first of all, I'm not that, arguing that. I'm arguing something very specific, so don't liken it to another argument. Second, the, any question that bears on military readiness is a direct question. I'm a patriotic person. I would love to serve the country. I'm too old. It takes me 27 minutes to run 5K. I'm not qualified. So the question is not what's empowering for me, it's what's good for the national defense. And that's not the lens through which you're looking at but this. But Kristen Beck is qualified and performed heroically on SEAL Team 6. Look, I'm not attacking and, Kristen Beck. I'm merely saying Kristen no, Beck was not... Excuse me, you are I, directly I love attacking it. You know what, I, I think well, it's very frustrating speaking with Excuse ideologues me. like you Excuse because me. everything you disagree with is an attack on someone. Tucker, you are... And I am not attacking you Kristen Beck. You are defending Beck. a policy that would remove a, a decorated member of SEAL Team you know 6 from the are, United States military. Are, if that's not an attack, sir, I don't know what is. You are an and, extremist and posing as a rational person. Well, it, I'm trying to have a rational debate, and you're telling me I'm attacking a Navy SEAL, which I'm emphatically not doing. Well, and you should be ashamed for using such a low tactic in what I'm trying to make a rational conversation. It is a fact that, that I'm a attacking woman named a Kristen SEAL. Beck would right. not be allowed to Who have did performed not serve her service. As a transgender which person also means that the taxpayers so actually, incurred no health care costs associated with that, which is also a fact that is at play here. The fact that This the is why we can't solve that, problems, because people who why? vote... Yes, it is. Because what you're doing is spewing because propaganda kick, and saying... Kick, no, because I'm asking honest questions, and you're throwing back dumb propaganda in my face and calling me a bigot. I think you have to own the implications, own of, the what implications. The, of the position right. you support. And it would mean that people who are serving with distinction are being separated from the military for an arbitrary reason. This is why... And it's wrong. Okay, I'll tell you why. This is why the Pentagon didn't announce it themselves today. Because this policy has very limited support in the Pentagon, but they're afraid, because of demagogues like you, That's a very that good they're point going to be attacked for saying what is obvious, which is, the point of the military is to win wars. And saying that Agreed. will get people like you Agreed. to call them bigots. That's so they standard. don't want to say it. That's my standard. Right. We You're want a, a military that's going to win wars, and, and the people who are serving with distinction are part of that. And by the way, All right. they're earning those benefits that, that, we're, that we're providing to them. Right. Okay. They're earning it by putting their I'm lives a, I'm, on I'm a, And they're doing right. more than you and I ever will to protect our country. And before we go okay. after Stop them, Stop your demagoguery. I've, I've had I, enough. I, I think you should only. Thanks, Congressman.